Hello, this is Mindu Chen. I'm Professor of Management Information System at Martin B. Smith School of Business and Economics, CSU Channel Island. This is part of a series of lectures on business process reengineering. In this video lectures, we're going to talk about several business process reengineering cases such that you have a better understanding how reengineering may have been used in real world. Uh, the first one I'm going to introduce is about Ford's account payable system. And Ford owned a minority stake of Mazda. And they once visited Mazda and found out that Mazda used much less people to handle the account payable. But let's first look at um, what's involved in terms of the account payable function in the organization. Uh, it started from purchasing. Um, the purchasing department um, sent out a purchase order to a vendor um, to acquire certain product or service. A copy of purchase order will be sent to the account payable department. And once the vendor ship the goods um, to the receiving uh, unit, uh, the warehouse, the receiving document, um, the shipping slip, etc., will be also sent to the account payable department. So that would be the second document. And eventually, um, an invoice will be sent by the vendor to the accounting department. And with the three documents, um, if they all match, then a payment will send out to the vendor. What surprised Ford in their visit to Mazda is they found out that one of the documents uh, is not required by Mazda for the payment. Uh, you may want to pause here and think about which one may not be actually required. The answer is the invoice. Because if you order something through the purchase order, and you know you receive everything that you have ordered, usually the, um, the payment term and the total payment has been documented in the purchase order. So to a certain extent, there's really no need to receive the invoice before you pay the vendor. And certainly, most of the accounting department probably will object to this type of practice. But Ford uh, went ahead and, and re-engineered its account payable, um, not only get rid of the invoice, but also um, apply various information technology to streamline this document matching process. And must I use only one fifth of personnel to do the account payable? And Mazda, they use a barcode system to uh, scan the delivered uh, goods, inventory um, are updated um, instantly, and production schedule may be changed accordingly. And the electronic payment will be sent to the supply without their invoice. So this is kind of the after pictures of the account payable system. And please note here, I actually use the title called procurement process because this is the account payable function here within four. But in the broader scope, the account payable process started with the purchasing function in the purchasing department. And it's from the purchase order to the payment. That's the whole um, beginning to end. Um, process. And uh, information system based on a central database has been used to consolidate the purchase order, the receiving document, and eventually the payment information. 
so the process has been streamlined um, and, and improved dramatically So afterward, um, Ford re-engineered the procurement process, not just the accounting, account um, payable process. And the new process cuts headcount by 75%. Invoice uh, are eliminated, and the matching process has been computerized, and, and certainly the accuracy has been improved. Let's look at the second case, which is a mutual benefit life insurance firms. In the process, it's about the new life insurance policy application process here. And the initial existing process took 30 steps, involved five departments and 19 persons to handle the new life insurance policy application and it's basically if you look at the diagram here um, it, it is basically um, a sequential process almost like assembly line in in manufacturing setting um, to some extent although we're moving to the service oriented society a lot of the service process are designed based on the manufacturing assembly line kind of a process and and that's probably why it's slowed down and not actually as fast as it could be this insurance um, application processing cycle time is 24 hours minimum if you really speed it up on average 25 22 days and a manager or consultant actually um, who was assigned to study the process uh, took approach which um, we call it stable yourself to the order okay what does that mean um, stable yourself to the order basically means that you would in this case you assume you actually got a new application form and then you would take that form personally to each department to each person in charge of part of the process and ask them to give you the highest priority to to review to approve this application and as a result of that, um, we found out it only took 17 minutes in the actual processing of the application. We, we call this processing time. Um, process time is, processing time is different than cycle time. If you use the ratio processing time to cycle time, it's always less equal to one. Um, if it's much less than one, that usually means there's a lot of room for improvement. And a lot of time wasted is probably due to the waiting um, in this process, in between processes. And, and someone maybe have a lot of backlog or it's on leave, uh, sick leave, um, etc which would delay the overall um, cycle time so in order to speed up this process to re-engineer this process just using computer to automate each of the step um, it, it's probably not the best solution it, that actually means you're automating uh, what you have um, that re, uh, that's almost like paving the cow's path as we mentioned earlier so let's look at um, what the new process looks like instead of implementing each of the step by computerizing it um, the consultant the business processor engineers uh, found that for most of the case uh, it's really not that complicated and they decided to actually create a new role 
which is called case manager. The case manager will be assigned to incoming cases. Uh, they are certainly more than one case managers. And they will take care of the case assigned to them uh, from beginning to end, no hands off. In, in many cases, 70-80% of the cases, the case manager can actually uh, approve the application uh, himself or herself. They are difficult, exceptional cases, people who have um, rare medical situation. Then the case manager will get the physicians, medical expert, underwriter involved to determine the, uh, the premium, uh, the insurance rate. And certainly the case manager would, um, system has been developed to actually support the case manager uh, with some kind of decision support system so they can plug in some number and profile of the applicant the system can check some of the standard rate table to determine the insurance premiums. And through, through training, case manager can actually use the system and be able to handle most of the cases. As a result, the application processing cycle time has been reduced to four hours minimum on average probably two to five days. The application handling capacity has been double, and about 100 few office positions may have been cut. And, and certain some of them has been transferred and retrained to be the case manager. So instead of using specialists to handle each of the staff, as illustrated in the previous workflow, the case manager were creating a generalist in this case to handle typical cases, which probably counts for 80% of the situation. And this definitely speed up the process uh, dramatically. And this is actually a very good example of re-engineering. It's not just about using emerging information technology, it's also about come up with some breakthrough concept which may not have much to do with information technology itself. And certainly in this case, technology tends to help case manager um, to, to handle most of the case um, by using decision support models uh, in determining uh, insurance premium. The third case we're going to look at, it's from a company called Capital Holdings. Um, it's a direct response group from this company. Uh, it's a, once again, it's an insurance firm. Uh, they use mass mailing, uh, try to reach out and acquire new customer. However, as we all know that uh, not many people are paying attention to their so-called junk mails. So they need to come up with a new visions. And, and this is the new vision that this direct response group come up with. Say so the company need to be exactly what most people didn't expect. Okay. Expect it to be an insurance company, which means the company has to be care about its customer and want to give them the best possible value for their premium dollar. This certainly to a lot of us sounds common sense, but you'll be surprised a lot of company don't think this way. And so they have a slogan and say, caring, listening, satisfying one by one. Remember they were doing mass mailing, so they treat customer as an aggregate instead of an individual customer. And once a customer sign on to a particular insurance policy, uh, they kind of lock in, so they don't really pay too much attention to them. So this is actually a change in terms of their mentality of how they should serve the customers. And so they are concerned about customer, try to understand their financial needs and concerns, and they try to provide value through their product and service that meet their financial needs. 
and they try to respond to them with clear information, personal attention, and and eventually they really want to nurture an enduring relationship that earn each member's loyalty and recommendation. And that's definitely very important to get this words of mouth marketing um, in terms of acquiring new customer. And in order to get that words of mouth marketing by your customer, the best way to do it is actually treat your existing customer um, well. So the changes from this upper cycle, which is mass mailing kind of marketing, try to target a group of target user and try to generate sales leads and uh, prospect eventually convert them to customer. That tends to be the focus in the past. Um, this group decided they want to focus on their existing customer. Customer here means existing customer. Because you, um, for existing customer, we have a lot of their individual information, which allowed us to give them um, personalized service. And through better service, uh, we can sell them more products, services, they will renew their existing service and also they will help us to promote our service to their friend and, and family member. And so this is actually customer management and customer service, and which is, is getting in this re-engineering efforts, getting more attention. On the IT side, um, the company has um, a variety of systems uh, to handle different product or service. For instance, for um, life insurance, um, for accident and health coverage. Um, there are two different systems. And when a customer called, um, they actually have to use a different logging to different program, try to figure out what's the information. They usually cannot answer the question right away. And, and so the response uh, tends to take a week or more. After re-engineering, um, a client server-based system has been developed to integrate the backend. So for the customer re service representative, they can actually check on the systems which could be on two different databases in a single user interface and respond to the customer's need and like change of address, change of coverage. And eventually a confirmation um, for security purpose, some of the confirmation uh, letter will be sent out to the customer. The change will be made um, pretty much on the spot, but uh, a confirmation will be sent out to, to finalize it. So this actually empowered the customer service representative, the frontline worker, to serve the customer faster and better. The last case is from Taco Bell. Um, a few years ago, then the CEO John, Mar John Martin um, stated that we are going backwards fast. If something was simple, we made it complex. If it was hard, we figured out a way to make it impossible. Okay. Think about it. Okay. Why this is happening? I don't think this is unique to Taco Bell. For any large organization, we may have, we may have seen such phenomena. Okay. And sometimes we I call this a bureaucracy. And also, this is um, a little bit of human nature. People kind of try to justify their work, and sometimes by creating a lot of unnecessary work, and, and in order to kind of justify their importance and value to the organization. If you look at the cost factors, customers uh, pay $1, but only about 
25 cents. A quarter of it um, went to the actual food and 75% of it goes into marketing, advertising, and overhead. So re-engineering, we really need to look at a process from the customer's point of view and ask ourselves, are customers willing to pay for this so-called value-added activity? Whatever we do, are we actually add value to our customer? Are they willing to pay for it? If the answer is no, then probably it's not worthwhile to do it. Taco Bell has actually a pretty good corporate vision. It stated that we want to be number one in share of stomach. Okay. And they slash the kitchens in terms of space requirement from 70% um, to 30%, to 30%. The seating capacity increased from 30% to 70%, which allowed them to accommodate more customer and certainly make more, generate more revenue. They eliminate the district manager, which is above the restaurant managers and they give the restaurant managers um, profit and loss responsibility. They also move the cooking of meat and bean outside the individual restaurant. That's, that's the, one of the reasons they can actually save space for the kitchen because they only need to have facility in the local restaurant to heat up the meat and bean and they don't have to kind of do all the cooking there. And this is actually sometimes we call a central kitchen concept, which uh, also allow you to improve the quality standards and, and standardize um, um, some of the services and the food item. So as a result, um, Taco Bell managed manage to, uh, to boost the peak serving capacity for an average restaurant from 400 an hour to 1500 an hour and the companies um, transformed from the 500 million regional company in 82 to 3 billion national company in 92. And this is an exercise which I will create a discussion forum for you to discuss. And so you will tell me uh, what kind of creative solution that you may have to solve this queuing problem. Um, certainly the scenario um, is uh, not very specific. It can be an airport, can be a bank, uh, can be any business which people line up um, to check out or to check in. So you have to um, come up with different idea how we may improve the situation by reducing the queuing time. So this concludes our um, lecture here, um, cases for business process engineering. Thank you.